I could go on and on and on about why anti-vaxxers are ill-informed and dangerous, and I will. But today we're going to focus on one aspect of the anti-vaxxer problem, the statistics many parents are relying on to avoid keeping their precious babies away from big bad needles. It's faulty and like a major pillar of the anti-vax tenet, selfish. Herd immunity is the idea that if a significant portion of the population has an immunity from a disease that should, in effect, protect the minority of unimmunized individuals. So if infectious diseases are spread from individual to individual, the chain would be broken if most of its links weren't susceptible, right? In theory. Generally, the rather small group of unimmunized children is mainly filled with the underserved, people who cannot afford regular care and vaccines. This has been helped drastically by the Vaccines for Children program, which has saved a great deal of lives and a massive amount of monetary cost, and helped to tighten the gap of unprotected children. But what about parents who willfully put their kids in that group? 538 has numbers on this, as they so often do, pointing out the hard consequences of counting on the herd to keep kids free of contagious disease. Most developed nations have had well over 90% vaccination rates, but since the mid-90s, that number has slipped a lot. Check out this chart. The only variance is between 95 to 98% vaccinated. Both are high numbers, but even a slight difference made a huge impact on whooping cough cases. The herd immunization idea is far from foolproof, and this is in a very ideal scenario. As 538 points out, parents may look at statewide numbers like 95% in immunization rates and think, oh, that's still pretty good. But population percentages don't evenly coat a state like a delicious frosting on a cake. Some counties might be at 98%, while others might be around 70%, which is ridiculously misshapen and irregular and a reject cake of immunization at best. Do not eat that cake, that cake is a lie. There is going to be a disparity the more local and more specific you get with it, and you will not be shocked to learn that, once again, the counties with lower immunization rates have higher whooping cough rates, about double that of counties just a few vaccination percentage points ahead. It is terrible to be in the unprotected group. It is doubly terrible to choose to be in it. In an age in which many of us have the privilege of protecting not just ourselves, but children who cannot make that informed decision on their own, why would we not? Why would we willfully choose to present not just defenseless little ones who depend on us, who we love, but our communities as a whole to infectious disease? Why would we elect to be in the pool of the exposed? Even though the link between autism and vaccinations has been debunked by medical doctors and scientists, this is still a reason people turn to. Some even say the trauma of being pricked by a needle is too much, which I, as an adult with needle phobia, can sympathize with, but come the fuck on! If I have to choose between dying horribly with the dreadful knowledge I could have saved myself versus panicking over a needle going into my flesh, obviously I will choose the latter. Knowing your state vaccination rate is not enough. Making the unqualified medical decision that the risks outweigh the benefits is not responsible especially in an age when scientific researchers are making it so incredibly easy to access that information. I mean this on a lot of levels, in a lot of situations, but please, please do not choose ignorance.